A year ago, many of us couldn't imagine that summer camp and virtual would be in the same sentence anytime soon. This year, it is abundantly clear that virtual staff training is a great solution for preparing our staff for what will certainly be a summer unlike any other. Gabs, Ruby, and I dive into the best practices for creating an engaging and effective virtual learning environment. Wouldn't it be refreshing if your registration software gave you more time? With UltraCamp, you can track attendance, manage staff applications, streamline registration, and much more. Get back the time you need to focus on what is really important, camp. Find out more at summercampsoftware.com forward slash camp code. Welcome to Camp Code, a podcast brought to you by GoCamp Pro. We have created and are dedicated to this podcast because we believe that staff training is one of, if not the most important part of your job as a camp director. Staff training is what prepares your staff to care for their campers, to feel confident in their skills, to do their jobs to the best of their ability, and to learn along the way. A well thought out and intentional staff training will help you in more ways than you can imagine. And we need to help each other bring our very best. Welcome to our show today. And before we jump into our topic, let's get some introductions all around. Beth, will you start us off? Absolutely. I'm Beth Allison. I'm co-owner of Camp Hacker and Go Camp Pro. And I'm speaking you speaking to you today from very snowy Woodstock, Ontario, Canada. I am a camp consultant with my husband, Travis, and my big passion is leadership training. Gabrielle. And my name is Gabrielle Rail, and I'm one of the camp directors of Camp Waro. Uh, camp Waro is an all-girls camp in the Laurentian Mountains of Quebec, Canada, and it is also <laughs> very snowy here, and we focus on creating a positive female community. And I'm Ruby Compton. I'm the Chief Exploration Officer for Ruby Outdoors. I'm based in Western North Carolina in the heart of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And it is not snowy here at all. We are finally getting our winter weather of 38 degrees and rainy. So oh. we have a few <laughs> days of that. And we're like the only place in the U.S. like Texas has snow right now. Mm, yeah, I heard fine. I'm, I'm not bitter about it at all. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, today's topic is virtual staff training. And this will not be our last episode that we do about virtual staff training. And so I know, as Beth said earlier, that a lot of folks are looking at it this year as a way to get some extra training time in, also to be more COVID safe and not having our staff sitting all together and learning all together in the same room. Uh, or to minimize that amount of time. So I want to talk about how to do it as effectively as possible. So Beth, what are you thinking as far as some proactive and engaging um, tips and tricks and strategies for making great virtual trainings? For me, I would start planning virtual training by asking my staff. These are likely the people who have been doing online learning for the better part of a year already. And they are more than likely the experts in what works and what doesn't. So I would send out a survey as soon as folks are hired, front loading that you're putting together some virtual training and of course explaining why you are doing virtual training, the reasons that you need to add it this year or do some of your training virtually prior to arriving at camp, and the reasons why this virtual training will be beneficial to them. What are your hopes for them? What will they get out of it? And then I would ask them for their advice. What are things that have worked well in your experiences? What are things that you don't find work well with virtual training? What are you sick and tired of? What suggestions do you have to make online learning engaging and useful? What are you looking forward to most about being together online as a staff? You know, any questions that you can come up with. I would also think about enlisting their help as you prepare. Could you ask leadership team members to come up with a fun and short activity to do each virtual session? Could you create teams so that small, you know, a small group is in charge of doing something creative on a topic, like a funny skit or an announcement to introduce the topic, just like you would do at camp, or a game to get them up and moving partway through a session, or an activity to get their brains working, or ways to help them to get to know each other better? But can you get them involved in small groups? 
uh, to produce things like short videos or PowerPoint presentations or skits or Instagram posts, whatever it is, to participate with you in creating this new online virtual environment giving each group a different topic to help prepare or introduce creatively, front-loading that you want to make it as much as camp, like camp as possible, and that you're turning to the experts for help and advice, things that they can work on prior to the sessions and present. So that's where I would start. Don't try to figure it all out on your own, especially if you are like me and technology is not your wheelhouse. Ask the experts. So that's where I'd start. Excellent, excellent. Gabrielle, what are you thinking? I think that um, that it's uh, camp directors, camp professionals are in a little bit of a conundrum when it comes to virtual training. And I and for me, the reason is because we don't want to have our staff members be in front of screens more than they already are. And there's that push and pull of you want them to be as informed as possible before they come to camp. We know that this summer, because everything is going to be so different. Um, information is going to help with, with creating confidence. It's going to lessen anxiety, but how do you manage the fact that they're on zoom all the time and then they're coming to you. And I think to the point of what Beth is talking about is front loading with your staff members, that this isn't going to be a three hour long lecture like they would be doing um, like they would be doing at, at school and, um, and asking them is, is very, very helpful. I would also look at perhaps, educating your staff members in different ways than simply a, a, a Zoom room. And I don't mean to say simply as, you know, it, it's not great. It can be actually really wonderful. And the staff training that I've done with my staff, they've really appreciated. It's almost a break from school, but it's because what we're doing is engaging, what we're doing is exciting. And it's talking about something that hopefully feels fun to them. But maybe also look at social media as your virtual training platform. Start an Instagram feed just for staff members and have easy to read, you know, three point to five point information about the summer. Um, do little mini videos so that they can watch it on their Instagram stories or on TikTok. Look at, uh, look at potentially going on YouTube and sharing some of your thoughts about the summer, something that they can look at on their leisure and that they can comment about. So, uh, yes, do the do the Zoom room thing, and that's really important, but also maybe look at different venues where you can inform your staff members and they can absorb that information at at their at their own leisure. Yeah, Gabs, you you read my mind, which is my first tip is to go asynchronous. So uh, right. again, look beyond the idea of like we have to all be on camera at the same time and and that has its own important um, use. And what we've seen is the prevalence of people being able to learn at their own pace um, and uh, and learn via the avenues that are most effective to them, be that Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, like University of YouTube, holy smokes, how much have I learned <laughs> over the last few years, especially being a homeowner. Oh my gosh, every time, <laughs> Google it on YouTube, every time. Uh, so think about that. And to go along with that, to kind of combine what Beth said is you do not have to do all that editing work yourself. Ask your staff who is interested, ask your other year round folks. There may be folks who this is something they're interested in doing. It's a great way for someone who maybe wants to go down the path of PR, uh, marketing, um, social media management. Like there are jobs for that. Remember like when we used to dream about, wouldn't it be cool to get paid to play on the internet? Well, like actually there are jobs now and brands who hire folks to do that. And so how cool that your summer camp can be a training ground for that as well. And oh, check it out. Now we're also teaching skills that are useful going into this job market. Um, I think one of the things that can help with people actually getting their asynchronous work done is to have some accountability. So make sure any sort of asynchronous learning that you're encouraging folks to do, um, either make it optional and it goes above and beyond, or make it required, but have a way that they have to check in that they've completed stuff. So maybe it's filling out a, a Google form, you know, quiz. Um, maybe it's reporting out in your staff Slack. Maybe it's sending you an email that says which flavor of 
ice cream did you say was your favorite as the camp director during that video, but I'm not going to tell you where it is in the timestamps. So you have to listen to the whole video. Uh, and then if you do that, like, oh, cool, you're actually going to get a $5 gift card to the local ice cream shop uh, because you did that. I may not tell you that. That may be a surprise and delight. So, but think about what that accountability looks like. And I know for me, online learning, it can be really easy with asynchronous stuff to be like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> and then you never do. And so give folks the tip of like block out a time on your calendar and whether that's every day for a week, you're spending an hour or 30 minutes or 15 minutes doing some learning um, or it's Tuesdays at four, you always do it, but encourage them to block out a time, put it on their calendar and this is their as asynchronous learning time. Um, and then to also encourage them to reward themselves somehow. Not only did you get that learning, but because you did this, like set up an, an intrinsic motivation award that they get for, um, for completing that task. So yes, go asynchronous, but also help your staff set up those systems. Some of them are really used to it and have done this all year, uh, but there's no reason we can't help them hone those skills. Awesome friends. Well, we're gonna take a quick break for uh, a message from one of our sponsors and we'll be right back. Hey friends, do you remember your why for getting into camping in the first place? I'm guessing it didn't involve sitting in front of a computer screen clicking in a database. Sometimes all the busy work and button clicking associated with running camp keeps us from seeing why we are there. That's why I encourage you to get to know my friends at Ultra Camp. Ultra Camp helps you get back to spending time remembering why you love working at camp. And how do they do this? Ultra Camp takes the stress out of using their registration software. With Ultra Camp, you don't have to worry about limits. Ultra Camp offers unlimited custom reports, unlimited support, unlimited training, and unlimited users. If you think this all sounds too good to be true, friends, it is real. Visit summercampsoftware.com slash camp code. And right now, Ultra Camp is offering free setup for a limited time exclusive to Camp Code listeners. My friends at Ultra Camp would love to show you a future where you finally have the time to get back to what's really important, running camp. Visit their website, summercampsoftware.com slash camp code and set up a time to chat. And we're back. <laughs> Beth, what other thoughts are you having about virtual staff training right now? Well, for those of you who are longtime camp code listeners, this is going to come as a shock, but I'm going to tell you not to forget to build community. Chances are very good that any virtual training you do with your staff will happen before they're able to be together in person in some sort of way. And in order for this to work well, you still need to follow all the normal steps that you would with in-person training. So build in time for folks to get to know people, to participate in activities that build trust and cooperation and that, that inspire them to be a part of something special. In pre-pandemic years, I knew of some camps that had tried online learning prior to staff arrival at camp, but they chose to give them all those required sessions that they needed to know, but were not the experiential fun connection building things. They were in fact, trying to get some stuff out of the way so that they had it covered so that when you get to camp, you had the really cool stuff. So they ran sessions on things like safety procedures, protocols for when people would need to call child protective services, daily schedules, and so on. And of course, what they wound up with was staff who were A, not excited to get to camp, especially new people, and ones who were not the least bit excited for the following online training sessions to come. So the lessons that I learned from their stories in the last few years, again, pre-COVID, were to be sure to make time for play online, to engage them in activities as you begin virtual training that allow them to share and have different partners and collaborate on problem solving or create something interesting. So what I'm trying to say is follow those same kinds of norms you would when bringing a group together at camp and creating that sense of family and togetherness. Your opening session online should be all about welcoming, about connecting and reconnecting relationships and making people feel like they belong, just like you would if they were at camp. Prepare a theme, again, like you would if you were all together in person and get staff excited about it by sending out Instagram posts or tweets containing hints about what you'll be learning. Do a countdown to the start of virtual training. 
have them meet up with at least one other person prior to virtual training. I would do it in small groups so as to take that pressure off. So maybe you, um, you, instead of doing just a pair, you do three or four people and mix the groups really intentionally and well. Give them a set of questions to answer or put a seasoned staff member in each group and get them to facilitate. But you could do things like we would at camp, like have each group come up with a cheer or a poem or a song to share during that opening time together. Or maybe each group creates a little 90 second PowerPoint presentation to share with the rest of staff to teach them about themselves. However you want to do it, you need to still get that feeling of excitement and silliness and belonging into your virtual training for it to be effective in any way. When staff are with us in person, we know that we never start off leadership training by having everyone sit and listen to us lecture for an hour. In fact, we should never do that ever during training, but the very same should be said for virtual training. Even though folks are sitting looking at a computer screen, how can we get them up and moving, changing things up at least every 15 minutes, having different speakers, getting staff's input, small group discussions, large group debriefs, chats, um, all those kinds of things. Have music in the background if you've asked them to do some reflection or some writing, change position, Zoom backgrounds. Could you offer a Zoom background for every staff member? Could it be different every session? Um, Bring in guest speakers from your alumni, but have um, have some fun with it. You could have some few social meals together and get everybody to dress up in a costume. Just because it's virtual doesn't mean it shouldn't feel like camp. And at camp, we do all we can to make it exciting and theme-oriented and memorable while throwing in great tidbits to help them learn. So let's do the same online as best we can. Right on. So many great ideas there, Beth. Thanks for sharing those. Gabrielle? What are you thinking? Yeah, well, I, I think that I think that there's there's part of us that if if you're still nervous and you're anxious about or just flat out don't want to do um, virtual training, then that's the person that's who you need to listen to. Your inner monologue is probably telling you this is what it should not look like, and so make that list of what you don't want to have happen. We talk about often. Um, at Camp Code that you need to front load with your staff. Let them know from the beginning what's expected of them before they join, if it's an in, you know, on Zoom type experience. Let them know that there will be group discussions, that we want their screen on, that actually we're having a tea party. So please have your, your teapot and your, your mug and you're dressed up you know, for, for that party. Let them know the tone of which they're walking into, because if they're already in this other headspace and they're also in a negative headspace, then we need to flip that mentality and, and shift it. And that's what we've been doing for years, I think, with staff training. We don't want staff training to be like at school. And there's no, not negative about school, just, just that what we're doing at, at camp has to immediately be applicable to their job this summer. And they need to be able to feel that what they're learning is gonna help them in that, but they also have to feel connected. So for me, one of the things that's the most stressful is that it's just so daunting. Where do I start? And I like to just go back to the basics and Beth already touched upon one of the pieces, which is building community. And if you look at your little trifecta, your little triangle, camp is about creating connections, creating connections to self, creating, creating connections to others and creating connections to camp. And if you, when you're looking at where to start and what to talk about, look at those three points and make some of us are a little bit heavier on the knowledge side. So creating connection to camp and that type of knowledge. And some of us are a little bit heavier on the community building side or the self side. So try to also have a balance that you're giving time for staff members to reflect during your sessions and they get to journal a little bit. So they connect, create connections to themselves and that they have a social time or a problem solving space connecting to others and then talking about camp this summer and how do we want to look connecting to camp. So try to break that down, look, look at a balance and listen to your inner self. If, you're, if you don't know where to start, look there. And if you are dreading it, that's a very, very important voice to listen to. Write all of those pieces down and say, how can we flip that narrative? Great. Yes, Beth is going smart, 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 smart. Uh, okay, so I want to share a really specific tip uh, yeah. for how <laughs> folks can make a virtual meeting feel like the leader who is in charge is being very intentional because we okay. all know how much 
here at Camp Code, we love intentional mm -hmm. staff training. So before I tell you that, I want to paint a picture for you. I want you to imagine back in the day, having in-person camp and you have a, a gym full or a field full of kids and um, you know, you've taught them when the hand goes up, the mouth goes shut or whatever your version of that is. And so everybody's running around and your leader, you know, you, the camp director, you put your hand up and eventually everybody gets quiet and puts their attention to you. And you go, how's everybody doing today? And people are like, Rah! right. And then you like, put your hand up and you're like, I need everybody to get quiet. <laughs> okay. You just committed the mortal sin of, <laughs> group management and addressing a group, which is to ask an open-ended question. Do not ask an open-ended question without giving some instructions on how you want folks to answer. And this I find to be especially important in this day and age where often one of the challenges that new youth leaders have or even new educators have is kids talking over them. Right, they can't, the, the, the teacher or the staff member is talking and like they say something and all the kids go, Ugh. right? And they, they chat with each other, which um, I once had a staff member say, that's social media. Like that's what we're used to. And, and I think about this now that something happens or even like I watch a TV show and I finish the TV show. And the first thing I do is like get online and Google commentary. Like, okay, well, this is what I'm thinking. Or has somebody else articulated already what I think about this? Like we need this exchange and this dialogue. Okay. So set all that up for you. So when you're on your Zoom meeting, okay, friends, when you're on your Zoom meeting and you go, Welcome, so glad you're here. How's everybody doing today? You're doing the same thing where people are like, I, am I supposed to unmute? Do I put it in the chat? Do I like do a thumbs up? How do I, uh, right? And it feels uncomfortable. Also the, this idea too of like, all right, we're gonna let people introduce themselves. <laughs> no, okay, so here's what I'm gonna ask you, please, pretty please to do is anytime that um, you finish speaking, pass the mic. So make it really clear who is supposed to go next um, or how you want them to respond to this question. So that may sound like this. I would love to hear how everyone's doing today. Can you put in the chat scale of one to 10? How are you feeling right now? Uh, can you show me with your thumbometer? Can you, which is, you know, a thumb up or down. You can't see me if you're not watching the video right now, <laughs> but, uh, and we'll talk about some more of those routines uh, in a future episode. Uh, but think about that. If you're like, hey, we're gonna do some introductions, let me model, you know, I'm Ruby, this is where I'm from, this is what I do. And next we're gonna go to Gabrielle, right? Always pass the mic, always set the expectation of who's gonna talk next. Anytime I'm on a call and people start with the, how's everybody doing today? Oh, let's, yeah, let's get around, go around and do some introductions. I'm like, oh, this is not gonna go well. So <laughs> set that intention from the get-go. And if you really do wanna create a space where somebody can speak up when they are feeling compelled to do so, even putting in a sentence like, hey, you can let us know that you would like to share by unmuting your mic and then I'll call on you and that'll help make sure we're not talking over each other. Just even giving that one little expectation will go a long way for folks seeing that you're much more intentionally running that training. All right, I think we have one more round in us. So Beth, what else are you thinking about for virtual training? I think I'd first like to just add on quickly to what you finished saying is that we set up those norms at camp. That's not unusual for us to say, you know, this is how we're going to do this. If you have something to say, you either put up your hand or you snap your fingers because you agree or whatever it is. So again, it's like bringing camp to the virtual world um, and trying to put it in there rather than putting the virtual world on top of camp. I think that's kind of exactly what you're just saying. Yeah, I very much got in the habit when I worked in Alabama of phrasing questions with, can anyone raise their hand and tell me, bloody, 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 blah, blah, blah. And when we had adults who were like really active, I'd be like, can any of the students raise their hand and tell me <laughs> before every question? Yeah. It's all about the front loading, everybody. You heard it here first in this season of Camp Goat. We've never said that before. <laughs> uh, I think my final tip for today is to create positive rituals that you can begin with your very first online session, whether it's how you check in, like Ruby was talking about the thermometer, thumbometer, or doing polls or quick answers to questions in the chat, like what's your best Netflix binge right now, something like that. 
have a closing ritual. Maybe it's the one you have at camp at the end of every day, or it's a brand new one that's just for virtual training. Introduce new ways to show appreciation. So, you know, you explain that they could use the clapping emoji or have everybody make a card or two. So if you're watching us um, and not just listening, you can have things like, you know, thanks, or that comment was really, really smart, or yes, yes, I'm on top of that. So um, just ways that you can encourage positive encouragement and have them prepare to share it when it seems appropriate. So um, maybe you could all take time together, put some music in the background and each make three signs on three cards of ways that they can answer questions that you're expressing to them. So something that's really positive, something that is, uh, yeah, I totally get you. I hear what you're saying, something like that. And they could add their own creativity and flair to create these cards. Bring as much of camp into the training as possible. So for example, if you have a camp bell, can you record that ringing and have it play before the session formally begins? Can you have a fire crackling in the background as you close your time together on Zoom or whatever platform you're using? Can you have someone prepared to play guitar and sing a favorite camp song, encouraging everybody to sing at home? but likely on mute so that you don't all sound like a big mishmash. Can you have your staff divided into teams or families each session? And then at the end of the session, you take a family photo like every single time. So you give each family two minutes to talk with each other and decide how they want their family portrait to look. Can you start the training with a great slideshow of amazing camp moments and great music to get folks to really remember why they do this job in the first place? Do not forget this is camp. We have an opportunity to change the way our people learn again, because we've already had that opportunity. So let's put our camp spin on online learning and make it something folks look forward to and get excited for. I love those. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. um, more family photos. <laughs> Need that. <laughs> Gabrielle, any other points you want to share on this topic? Yeah, and I just want to say, Beth, thank you so much for mentioning that because we are in the business of creating connections. And um, of course, I'd rather be in person. Of course, I'd rather do the things that do the things um, the way we used to do them. Um, but there's opportunity when um, when we're forced down a certain path. And for me, virtual training is one of those opportunities. I think there's an opportunity of building connections with our staff members before they arrive to camp, especially for our new staff members and for our young staff members. I think there's an opportunity to front load with our returning team, our older team on how we want to behave online and how we support each other just by either, you know, leaving comments or, or just the thumbs up emoji, whatever. But for me, the bigger piece is something that I've been passionate about for years and years and years which is putting camps and our camp industry at the forefront of, of being experts in what we do. And we're experts in a lot of things. We're experts in creating community, in leadership, in problem solving, in child behavior management, in creativity. We have to do it all because we run many little societies. And those little societies, uh, in my opinion, the goal is that those little individuals learn some great stuff and they bring it to the outside world and spread that great stuff to other people around them. But I think this is pushing us to talk about in an expert-like way on the things that we do behind our arches, if you will. And by posting some of those behavior management techniques on social media, by posting things on how you are intentional about staff training, and therefore how you're intentional about your, your company and the program itself, that I think will open up the eyes of people around us that know we do good work, but don't know how we do it. And then more importantly, for people that don't even know that we exist and perhaps we're building trust with them. So use social media as your place where you can showcase, not only educate your staff, but also put them as that, this, that you're an expert, that they're experts and what we do um, you know, deserves, you know, space at the table. And so I hope that there's a, a, a little bit of a shift with camps in presenting our expertise 
And, and I hope that camps can share each other's expertise as well. And remember, if you're looking at all the people that are doing great stuff on leadership and camper behavior, camper behavior management stuff, and you're like, oh, who am I to put this out there? It's already been done. Remember, you're not competing with people, you're adding to the conversation. And it's really important to hear the same thing in different ways and from different perspectives. So that's just my, my, my uh, wish for all of us and, and to use the good work that you're doing. Don't hide it behind the arches, bring it out so that other people can benefit and also see what we do at camp. Awesome. So good. So good. Uh, last tip that I'll throw out there for today um, leans into the equity piece of running virtual training. Uh, so I would encourage you this year, if you are planning to run any sort of virtual training or have your staff use their devices as any part of their, their job. So for instance, um, if you're going to have a, like a camp staff Slack, uh, and that's going to be active throughout the summer, not just during training um, or only during the summer. Um, I would encourage you to include some sort of tech form as part of your onboarding paperwork. I would not put this in your application. That's going to set you up for some discrimination liability. Um, but ask questions like, what kind of devices do you have access to and will you have access to throughout the summer? Um, this can give you an idea of like what kind of technology you can expect or need to plan for, for staff to have on camp, to need to keep safe, to keep out of their cabins and whatnot, uh, <laughs> if that is the case. Um, ask what hours do they have rel reliable internet and or data connections? Um, ask about their comfort on screen. Um, Think about some of the things that you may have become very comfortable and acquainted with, uh, and think about somebody using technology that's five years old trying to access that, and they may not be able to. Um, I had some times this summer that I was on committees and needing to join calls, but I was also not in a place where I had Wi-Fi or reliable data. And so a lot of times I was calling into to these committee meetings and there might be something on the screen and I'm on my phone and it's hard to see. And so just having a little bit of a better idea of what that's going to look like for your staff and not assuming that everybody has the same things that you have, uh, I think is going to be really critical. You also might consider, I know always when we talk about training, a question of, do we pay the staff? How much do we pay to the staff? You know, is it their normal rate? Is there not their normal rate? I wonder about whatever it is you choose to pay your staff this summer, adding on or and or including as part of that training package, some sort of stipend for helping them cover the cost of their technology. You know, are you putting some cash towards helping them pay for their internet that month or pay for their cell phone because you're asking them to use these personal devices. If that's not something you wanna do, is it possible for you to get some extra devices that can be loaned out if somebody needs them for being able to access your virtual trainings? Um, you know, I live in a very rural area. Like there are places that are not far from where I live that cannot get internet. And so if I had staff from those areas, they may be looking to go to the local community center or library and sitting in the parking lot doing their training. Uh, so let's ask some of these questions. I think it's okay. Um, check with your HR people, but I think it's okay to ask, like, can you give us a range of how much you're spending on your, your cell phone bill, your internet bill each month so that we have an understanding of what would be a reasonable amount to, to contribute and pay back towards that and make it clear that that's what it's for. They don't necessarily have to use it that way, um, but, but let them know that you're taking into consideration like there is some expense to you being connected this way. And unfortunately, currently, it's not a, a given that everybody's going to have that. We hope that it is, you know, university students, like I wonder about trying to do some of that virtual training. It's so tricky, like if university students are on campus where they do have reliable Wi-Fi, but it's also the end of the semester and they're dealing with, you know, exams and finals and all that stuff. So I always, that's always such a funny line to walk, but think about that too. Maybe they have better access at school than they do at home. So I think it's important to think through some of those questions um, and a simple Google form I think would work. And again, I would also have that as part of your onboarding process. So somebody Somebody's already been offered the job, they've accepted it, you have a little more freedom on what questions you can ask. And I'd run those by probably your attorney and your, um, your HR department if you have it. Any other closing thoughts? All right. Gabrielle, will you recap it for us today? I would love to. And I would love to start with where 
Ruby left us. I actually had never thought about compensating or reaching out to my staff and see where they are at when it comes to our online programming. And that is for me is almost the, it's just like the, the starting point that we want to go to. It's with our staff. And so that moves on to Beth. Beth is saying, hey, ask your staff, what do they want? What don't they want? What do they like? What don't they like? It gets your staff to inform you. You do not need to be a magician or a mind reader. You can just ask them and it can be a fun little poll that you do on Instagram. And there you go. You're going to get your data and then you're going to feel confident in the direction that you're going to be going into. And while you're doing it, you do not need to do it all and you do not need to do it all by yourself. Reach out to those staff members. During staff training, we're hoping that you are not doing this all by yourself and neither should be the virtual training model. You should be including people so that they have the opportunity to be part of the learning process and that this is gonna to add to future knowledge in their future endeavors and uh, professions. So ask your staff members. And when we're thinking about training, let's not just limit ourselves to Zoom rooms though. Those are amazing and we can make them fun just like at camp when you're involving other people and you want to have rituals involved and you want to build community, but also look at social media, Instagram, um, Insta stories, YouTube, Facebook, wherever, break down that information so that not only your staff members see it, but your parents see it and other people like millionaires that want to donate a lot of money for you because they're inspired by what you do. So make sure that you post that online. And a little couple of good best practices is pass the mic. So let staff members know what is the rituals, what are the routines, and how do they know when it's time to talk. And they're probably, instead of getting crickets back at you, you'll have information coming back at you as well. And if you also don't know where to start, look at your trifecta. We want to create connections with self, others, and camp. There's so much more that we talked about today. And lucky for us, we have another episode on virtual training. Ooh. Thanks, Gabs. And we want to encourage you, our listeners, to get involved with the podcast. Tell us your thoughts on this episode by using the hashtag camp code on your social media of choice. You can also tell us what kind of topics you'd like for us to discuss, any guests that you recommend we have on the show, uh, any great leadership training tips that you have to share. We'd love to hear from you. We are all about sharing in this industry. Also, if you have found this podcast to be useful, please leave a rating and review for us in your podcasting app. Your feedback really helps keep the show going and helps new listeners find the show as well. We love our reviewers so much that sometimes we even share highlights here. So if you want your review to be read online, uh, you don't even have to sign it with your name. Uh, we'd love to, to share it here on the podcast. Before we sign off today, we'd love to let you know how you can get in touch with us. Beth? You can check out our website at gocamp.pro. You can email me directly at beth at gocamp.pro or on Twitter at Topaz. Gabs. And you can check out where I work at waro.com, O-U-A-R-E-A-U.com. You can write me at info at waro.com. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Gabrielle Rail and Rail takes two L's. And you can email me ruby at rubyoutdoors.com. You can also find me on Instagram at rubyoutdoors. And you can also follow me on Twitter at rubylin85. And Beth is going to share with us what our next episode will be about. And I'm sure you'll be surprised because we've only talked about it several times today, but we are going to do virtual training part two. Today, we really sort of talked about some of the best theory practices and next time we'll be getting uh, down to the nitty gritty and of the how to's. So I'm looking forward to that. Thanks, Beth. Our final segment on each podcast is a best practice for leadership training. And we would love to hear some of your memorable moments or most effective tips. You can tell us what they are using that hashtag camp code. This week's best practice comes from Gabrielle. That comes from Ruby because Ruby and I had a wonderful conversation last week and we were talking about prioritizing and we we're talking about where do we put our energy and when I say we I was talking about myself and where do I put my energy because I feel pulled in so many different directions. I want to support my staff. I want to support my business. I want to support my associations. It's it's there's just so many places right now that I can put my energy and I just don't know how or where to do it. And I also have a little bit of a hard time saying no 
Um, more because I get really excited about new projects and I also like supporting people, but I also get very excited about new projects. So Ruby was telling me that there's something that she's been practicing, which is instead of saying yes right away, which I do, um, let's ask three questions. So ask, try to have three questions in order that would make sense for you when uh, making that decision and then take a pause before answering yes. So ask three questions that are gonna apply to your mental wellness, three questions that are gonna apply to your financial wellness, um, to the time that you have or don't have during these busy times and take a little bit of time to reflect on, on, that, on that proposal, that project, that collaboration before you say yes. So that's something I'm trying and I'm finding it very helpful and I'm looking at all the things I did say yes to and I think if I would have asked three questions, it might have helped maybe construct a little bit better um, the working relationship that I have right now. But I'm looking forward to, to trying this out in the future. I'm all about the intentional yeses. I'll tell you that yes. I've said no a lot lately and mm. it's, it is addictive. <laughs> you're you're really, like... but you're really good at it. And I really <laughs> admire it. And I want to also, cause I think we were on a call together and somebody asked us something and I was like, yeah. And you were like, um, so quick question, how much time would this take? And da, da, da. And I was like, oh, these are good questions. <laughs> I need to do this more. <laughs> It's good practice for it's good practice. we have we have lots of pleasers in the camp industry so it yes. is a really helpful uh thing thing thinking about those intentional yeses i strongly yeah. encourage it for everybody <laughs> <laughs> all right friends well camp code is part of the go camp pro podcast network you can check out all our other podcasts at gocamp.pro slash podcasts stay tuned for our next episode and from all of us here at camp code thanks for the listening friends Thank you.